so this is just for uh, young engineers yep. or students yep. who are sometimes in dilemma. They don't know how to address this. Yeah. Whenever they are building a particular machine, and I'm, sure. I'm just going to address for 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 few for few seconds robots and machine. You have mentioned, and, and this just occurred. Uh, you, you mentioned laptop or, yep. or a computer. Laptop and a computer must have taken tons of jobs from accountants so in terms of book bookkeeping. Now That's accountants right. were always reasonably paid or paid. More. Uh, more than an average. Sure. There was no human cry about that, right? This team, people adapted it because maybe you know a laptop was not a movable, movable laptop. It's actually very easy to make yeah. a laptop or move with a laptop. So I, I tell you some of my experiences. A lot of engineers who were a part of my team and when we were designing a robot which was supposed to ease services yeah. and ease services across services sector and the whole hypothesis was based on few things which, which was a little bit controversial mm -hmm. and India is known as a services industry and sure. all that stuff which was the hypothesis was based on a simple 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 thought that any activity which is repeated and which is repeated with a lot of certainty uh, again and again whether it is a BPO industry, whether it is a hospital healthcare industry, whether it is airports, whether it is airlines, whether it is banking should be replaced by simple robots mm -hmm. and in a very very cold way create a business case for that mm -hmm. so that the shift size it becomes less expensive, sure. fatigue management means replacement of just batteries and sure. go there. And that made absolute sense. But even between engineers, there mm -hmm. was I could I could see some of the faces saying that, hey, by the way, because somebody's relative was mm -hmm. doing that particular job, you're going to take a job for sure. Probably the last time I'm going to push the entire why and robotics is a sure. old school, right? Sure. It's not something applications are coming now, sure. you know, much more is before. Sure. Nobody questions robotics in the industries which you have mentioned, mining yeah. or aerospace or car manufacturing. Or, or car manufacturing. Why in commodity space? Yeah. So or just to just to push it, why governments or yeah. why there is no debate hmm. of the quality of employment or quality of future jobs mm -hmm. rather than saying that hey, by the way, you know, mm -hmm. this is not the right thing to do. Yeah. So I think the reason for that is disruption is always painful. So any new disruptor in a market, when they create a step change, there is always a pain point. And this pain point comes for to various people in various ways. So if you try to introduce a new product to market, you have to first of all figure out, it may be very, the sums may add up, it may create an overall sort of profit for that particular company. So you have to make a case that kind of satisfies all of those ecosystems. Because I mean, I think we discussed that on the flight on the way here, because you said if you put a robot there and then you had all the other peripheral services, which are still being handled by old traditional services, then there is, you may have to pour in a lot of money to bridge that yes. uh, that gap. Yes. So unless you start from a completely blank slate, mm. let's say you're given a, a new town to design from scratch mm. up, mm. Uh, it's very hard to plug something in mm. to an existing ecosystem exactly. without a lot of pain. Exactly. So I think it is the governments, it's the companies, it's the society which takes that leap of faith which will benefit in the long run at the expense of pain, short-term pain. So, and I think that is really the case. And so, and this is not new to robotics. So we are now in the UK, in the US as well. So this is exactly the debate facing autonomous driving cars. So I, I'm involved again with some lawmaking number 10 debates at the House of, House of Lords. We had to give evidence. And, and one of the biggest questions that were asked of us was, you will not, with these autonomous driving technologies, even if you have the perfect technology in terms of sensing, in terms of autonomous driving, in terms of replacing people, you are never going to, on a particular day, switch off all the other people with their cars, with their you know, manual driving cars and, and gears and say, from now on, it's going to be only autonomous driving cars. So you have to have this transition phase between autonomous driving cars to working in conjunction with the current existing legacy systems. You also, so my belief, and this is part of my talk that I gave you know, in Edinburgh, was that we will never achieve one or the other extreme. So we will, that's the concept of shared autonomy, where a significant part of the system will be more moving more towards, it's just the, the slider that moves. So, so we are now moving more towards significant more autonomy, but still human in the loop kind of setting. So we need to have a scenario where this, as we move the, the slider, the pain points of the 
ecosystem around it has to be addressed. And now, I am not the person who can give the answers to who needs to address that. It may be governments. So I know that Singapore, for example, is a very good example of a government stepping in and pouring some resources to bridge this pain for the people uh, who are being disrupted. It may be in the Silicon Valley, it's, it's really more the kind of West kind of way of, you know, whoever survives, survives, whoever doesn't survive, doesn't survive. And I think, and I don't know the system here in India, but it's somewhere in between, I think. So somebody has to address that point, that pain point for that transition. That, that is really the issue, I think. On that positive note, any message that you have for engineers who are on the verge, computer science engineers who can, or electrical engineers who are on the verge of doing research versus becoming specialist robotics engineer or PA developers? Mm -hmm. Okay, the one thing I have to say is that I think there is a role for all kinds of people in today's society. Whether they are coders, whether they are you know, designers, whether they are people who come to conceptualize solutions for a whole global system. So it's about finding a niche, not following the crowd in some sense. So you're a good example of that. I think for your person, I, the reason why I found you really interesting when I was talking to you for a brief amount of time is because, I mean, I think you're somebody who broke the norms in terms of what is a traditional career and sort of really follow your passion. So I think that is important. I think that is hugely important because in terms of driving something, it's not enough if you just do something that's 9 to 5, you need to have the passion for, for doing it. And if you are not suited for a particular kind of thing, you can change. Um, and that, that's, it's no point sort of doing something that you don't care about. I mean, I, I enjoy going to work in my case because I'm, I'm excited about the new kind of things that you do. Of course, you need the support of a huge network of people. So in my current role, I mean, I do my amount of actual research I do is actually quite minuscule, but I direct a lot of research with the right team around, with the, my PhD students, my postdocs, and they are the ones who keep me young in my sort of thought process. And I think that's what you need. And so for me, it's about being passionate about what you do. From an engineer's perspective, it's about finding the passion. And, and for the Indian government, I would say it's about helping reduce the red tape on all of these things, giving people the freedom to express themselves and reducing red tape. That will really propel the economy and the research here. Passion and freedom. Absolutely. Thank you for this. It's an honor and it's a privilege to do this. And I'm sure every engineer and every person who wants to become an engineer or wants to become anything will benefit from that. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.